if our function is uh, in the time domain, t is measured in seconds, then L is measured in per second or hertz. So we are going from the time domain to the frequency domain, or the length or position domain to the frequency domain. And just in case you're wondering how do we go between cos omega t to cos kx, well, I've written down the required uh, expressions for that. Note, by the way, we're getting back that the, it's we're getting back that the uh, the period is twice l, which is exactly what what I've what what I wanted it to be. But this is just a quick revision of Fourier series. It's not something I want to get bogged down in. So how do we start deriving the Fourier transform? Well, let's start with the Fourier series in the time domain, and we're going to use omega instead of k. So we're going to omega is twice pi times the linear frequency k. So what do we do now? Well, the Fourier series has already introduced, as I've said, the concepts of frequency space and cosine and sine basis functions. What we now must do is plug in for the ANs, the BNs, and A0. Now, how do we get those? Well, they involve a small bit of integration, and the integrals are written here. So they're just there for, for completeness. So let's plug in those particular integrals and use a dummy variable inside them. Now, of course, they're all going to be, in actual fact, integrals of the variable t, but just for the moment, I'm going to use the dummy variable r. It is just, as you'll see later, you'll see its usefulness later on. Now, the thing is though, while the integrals, of course, are continuous, we still have this summation here along the cosines and sines. And the summation is in omega. We have omega sub n here. So omega is discrete. Well, what would delta omega be? If we look at it, we would see that delta omega would turn out to be pi over L. Pi over L. So what I'm going to do is everywhere I have L here and here, I'm going to plug in for the relevant value of delta omega. Now, I'm sure you can see what's going to happen next. As L goes to zero, here, as L goes to zero, we get something with an infinite period, or we get an aperiodic function. So, as L goes to zero, delta omega also goes to zero. And the usual things from the, the from integrals comes in. So we get delta omega becoming d omega. We have the periodic function f sub l of t becoming the aperiodic or continuous function f of t. And we have our discrete summation becoming our continuous integral. Now it's important to note, by the way, the start point of our integral is zero. Now all of this happened because we moved from the discrete omega to the continuous, uh, the well, continuous t. And we're nearly there. The A0 term, by the way, just it just falls out. It's no longer required. So what we're left with is follows. We still have f of t, but this time it is a continuous f of t. There is no subscript, subscript L saying it's discrete. We have the integral, of course, from 0 to infinity. And we have our cosines and sines with respect to omega. And these, of course, are integrated with respect to the continuous variable omega. Now, you have to remember, of course, that a of omega and b of omega are the Fourier coefficients, but they in themselves involve their own integrals. Now, before we say any more, let's just remind ourselves. If we go back to the discrete Fourier series, well, b of n and a of n involve their own integrals. So this is nothing, this is nothing different. The a of omega and b of omega still involve particular integrals. Now, so the, and I'm here, by the way, in my notes here. So the a of omega and b of omega still involve the infinite integrals. Now, we're able to do the trigonometric sleight of hand I was talking about earlier on. So remember, a of omega is going to have a, a cosine somewhere in it. b of omega is going to have a sine somewhere in it. So you have a product of cosines plus a product of sines. And the trigonometric sleight of hand I was talking about at the very start of the video allows us to rewrite this as cos of omega t minus omega r. 
we still have the d omega here but because of the integrals for a of omega and b of omega we also have a dr and now you might be wondering well hold a second where did this where did the scaling term come from and this is the this is the clever part instead of integrating zero and zero to infinity we're now integrating cosine which is an even function so because we have an even integral integrating an even function we can instead of integrating zero to infinity we can integrate from minus to positive infinity and just half the answer so that's where the two comes from what about the pi well that was actually there all the time even though i wasn't writing it because if you go back to this the discrete version we had this one over one over pi there the whole time and that has remained there throughout this rough deriv derivation so it's it's there the whole time now as i've said earlier on again sine is an odd function and over an even integral it will integrate to zero so that means i could for example add a, an i times the excuse me the sine of omega t minus omega r no problem and it wouldn't change the integral so let's do that and if we do that we can invoke Euler's equation so we have 1 over 2 pi the double infinite integral we have f of r as our dummy variable still there and now we have e to the i omega outside of t minus r here but remember that r was nothing but a dummy variable and this is why we use it because if i had left or as t with this would we would have never gotten here it's more of this exponential sleight of hand because the product of exponentials can be rewritten as i've done here minus i omega t and plus i omega t and what we what we're actually looking at is our free transform pair as i said at the start of the video we could rewrite the two equations as one and this is what we've done so in the middle we have our inverse transform and on the outside we have our forward Fourier transform. 